Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, uh, my garter snakes Daryl and Carol needed a little bit of housekeeping done and I decided to refresh their substrate a little bit and add some extra springtails to their enclosure. So I thought it would be a good time to show you how I have them set up and go over some of their care requirements. And I'll also talk a little bit about how I maintain uh, bioactivity uh, specifically for my snakes. And Daryl and Carol are just a little bit over a year old and garter snakes reach maturity a little quicker than many other species of snakes. While most snakes take around three to five years to reach maturity, garter snakes will reach maturity in about one and a half to two years. So Daryl and Carol are almost full grown, but not quite there yet. And what I really love about garter snakes is that they have such big personalities and they are very active. They are diurnal, which means they are most active in the daytime. And although sometimes they can be a bit spastic, they're really fun at, to watch and interact with. Now when garter snakes are babies, they are even more flighty and spastic. And baby and juvenile garter snakes can be uh, quite a challenge to handle. But as they mature, they do calm down a bit. And Daryl and Carol are getting much easier to handle than they used to be, but it's definitely taken some work to get them there. The substrate in Daryl and Carol's enclosure has been in there for a while and it's broken down some. Uh, and But there are uh, plenty of springtails and isopods in there. So rather than just completely replacing it, I am just topping it off with another inch or two of fresh substrate. And for that, I'm using just a regular Vivarium ABG mix. And my last video, I showed how I make that ABG mix. So I'll put a link above to that video about how I make the ABG mix. As far as enclosures go, I keep Daryl and Carol in a 30 gallon aquarium and that seems to be a, a good size for the pair of them, although I wouldn't put them in anything smaller than that. And one of these days I might upgrade them to a 40 gallon aquarium. And I keep my snakes in bioactive enclosures, but unlike the typical tropical bioactive enclosures like those for uh, my frogs and geckos, I don't use a drainage layer or a false bottom. And especially with colubrid snakes like garter snakes, they need only moderate humidity, but substrate that's too wet will cause health problems such as respiratory infections and scale rot. So I only lightly mist their enclosures about once a week or so. Sometimes I don't even need to do that with these guys because since garter snakes are semi-aquatic, 
They love soaking in their water dish and they often splash some of the water around their dish. And this means that I have to be extra vigilant with them to keep their water dish clean and fresh. And for all of my snakes that are in bioactive enclosures, I still like to use a combination of a heat lamp for a basking spot and a heat mat underneath their warm side hide to create a thermal gradient. But that can be a problem when you have an enclosure completely filled with bioactive substrate. So I've kind of worked out a way to do this while still having enough of the enclosure uh, filled with bioactive substrate. And what I do is I put down a piece of a log or something like that at the end of the heat mat to create a barrier or a kind of wall. And then over the heat mat, I put just a very shallow layer of reptivark. So they still have access to the heat source. And then in the rest of the enclosure, I put down a thick layer of bioactive substrate. And I think that not only keeps a thermal gradient, but I keep the warm side drier and the cool side moister. And it kind of creates a humidity gradient as well. It is important though with any snakes to create a temperature gradient so they can regulate their temperature. And as far as temperatures for garter snakes, I try to keep the temperature at their heat mat uh, right at uh, 85 degrees. And then I experiment with different wattage heat lamps uh, to get the basking spot temperature closer to 90 degrees. And then their cool side is closer to the low to mid 70s. As far as lighting goes, it is important to give any reptile a proper uh, day-night light cycle. And since garter snakes are di diurnal, I do provide mine with UVB light as well. And I think that's one reason why garter snakes are so active, because they love to spend their days going uh, about their th things while soaking up the sun. However, you don't want to put their enclosure near a window in the direct sunlight because that can create a situation with way too much heat. Garter snakes will spend a certain amount of time uh, completely immersing themselves in their water dish. So you do need a water dish that's large enough for them to do that. And you need to keep it filled at all times with fresh uh, dechlorinated water. And I think since garter snakes do have such big personalities and they're extremely active snakes, it's really important for them to have a, a lot of enrichment in their tank. And that means a lot of places to hide, lots of things to climb and move around on, uh, different kinds of textures. And that kind of stimulation is something that garter snakes really need, as well as any snake, really. But I especially can't imagine a garter snake being happy in a sterile tub with just one hide and a dish of water. Thank <laughs> you. 
Another interesting thing about garter snakes is that unlike most snakes that lay eggs, garter snakes give live birth. And the babies develop in egg sacs inside of the mother until it's time for them to hatch, and then she gives birth. And my interest in keeping reptiles is to care for them as pets, and I really don't have any interest in breeding them. But since garter snakes do better when cohabitated, and I do have a pair of them, it is very possible that sooner or later I could wake up to find a clutch of baby garter snakes in their enclosure. And I'm prepared for that if it were to happen, but that's something you might want to be aware of if you're thinking about keeping garter snakes. And here I'm just adding some extra springtails to their enclosure. And I usually come in about once every couple months and refresh some of the springtails and other cleanup crew members. Right now I'm out of, out of isopods, so I can't add any isopods at the moment. Uh, but especially for my snakes, I like to add uh, some extra cleanup crew members and I often put uh, mealworms in their enclosures and let those mealworms uh, pupate into beetles. And I also sometimes put uh, some dubia roaches in their enclosures. And the mealworm beetles and the dubia roaches do a really good job as a, an additional cleanup crew, especially for the snakes. And just because they are in a bioactive enclosure and there is a cleanup crew, and the cleanup crew does quite a bit, but I still do have to come in and spot clean the enclosure whenever it's necessary. When it comes to feeding garter snakes, most of the research that I've done says that garter snakes prefer more frequent but smaller meals and that they should be fed smaller meals as often as three times a week. But my experience with Daryl and Carol is that they eat a pretty big meal every Saturday, which is when I feed my other snakes and often don't want anything more when I offer it to them during the week. I do think though that many people often overfeed their reptiles and so I try to be careful of that. Uh, so I still offer them uh, extra food once or twice during the week and sometimes they eat more and sometimes they don't. And garter snakes eat a varied diet in the wild and will eat everything from small frogs to earthworms to fish. And giving them a variety of foods is very healthy. But mice contain more nutrition for them than worms and fish. So what I do every time I feed them is I give them each one pinky mouse and then I give them either a night crawler or cut up some pieces of frozen tilapia fish or cut up pieces of raw chicken. And most of the time with one pinky and a few small pieces of a different other food, they will decide that they're full. And the reason I give them pinky mice is because some sources say that garter snakes have a difficulty digesting fur. And while with most other species of snakes, it's not a good idea to cohabitate, but garter snakes are different and they actually do better in captivity with at least one other cage mate, if not more. However, you do have to be very careful at feeding time. 
they will fight over their food and they can even cause accidental cannibalism. So you can't just put food in their clo enclosure and leave it. You have to monitor their feeding carefully at all times to make sure that each has eaten and keep them from fighting over their food. So I definitely tongue feed them and I try to manipulate them to be on the opposite sides of the enclosure as I give the, each of them something to eat. And as long as each of them has something in their mouths, they tend to leave each other alone. But occasionally I've had to just grab one of them to keep it from attacking the other for its food. And here at the end of the video, I'm going to feed these guys Daryl uh, shed last night, and so I am absolutely sure he is hungry. And last week, Carol ate a lot, and Daryl didn't eat anything, and I think that was because he was about to shed. And I think right now, Carol is getting ready to shed too. So Daryl ate his food like a champ, but Carol didn't really want anything today. Okay, that's it for today's video, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe button, and you can also ring the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are available. And until the next video, I look forward to seeing you again real soon.